the word speed gets tossed around a lot in discussions about broadband and internet performance, but it doesn't really give a good representation of how networks perform. Network engineers use fancy term terminology like bandwidth, latency, and jitter to describe the performance in, of a network, but it gets very confusing to non-engineers. In this tutorial, I'll try to explain these concepts in plain English. Think of information as something that needs to be delivered from point A to point B, and let's say our only means of information delivery is a rider on a bicycle. We put information onto a DVD, DVD disc and we ask our carrier to deliver it from point A to point B, and the two points are one mile apart. We also want that carrier to come back and tell us if the DVD was delivered successfully or not. If the delivery was successful, then we'll ask the writer to deliver another DVD to point B. The carrier can make a round trip in 720 seconds, riding at 10 miles per hour. This delay of 720 seconds is what network engineers call latency. Within those 720 seconds, our bicycle network delivered 4,000 megabytes of data per DVD, which translates to 32,000 megabits of data. If we divide 32,000 megabits by 720 seconds, our network delivered information at a rate of 44.4 megabits per second. This rate of delivery is called bandwidth. But what if we want faster bandwidth, more bandwidth? We can either ask the writer to go faster, or we can ask the writer to carry more DVDs per trip. Let's say writing faster, let's say writing faster isn't feasible, so we'll ask the writer to carry 10 DVDs on each trip. And this effectively increases our bandwidth tenfold from 44.4 megabits per second to 444 megabits per second even though our latency stayed the same. That's great for some applications, but what if we don't need to send 10 DVDs or even one DVD of the information? What if we need to send a short one megabyte message and we don't have more and we won't have more to send until we get a reply message from B, which our carrier can carry on his way back. In this particular case, we can't leverage our bandwidth capability and our network performance is limited by latency. We would only be able to send one megabyte per 720 seconds, which averages out to 11.1 .1 kilobits per second. Obviously not very fast. If we, need to, if we need 10 round trips to say what we need to say, it will take 7,200 seconds or two hours to deliver a very small amount of data. So, in the real world, a lot of applications, it turns out that a lot of applications have this problem of requiring too many round trips. And so application engineers will often tune their applications to require fewer round trips. If they can get it down to two round trips at five megabytes per trip, we can effectively boost the bandwidth to 55.5 kilobits per second or cut our two, two hour transaction down to 24 minutes. So how does, this, how does this translate to, to real-world communication networks? It turns out that our data carrier, instead of being the bicyclist, is light. And light has a speed limit of 123 miles for every thousandth of a second or millisecond. For communications between East Coast and West Coast, it's at least 2,500 miles one way and 5,000 miles round trip. At the very minimum, the speed of light latency will be 40.7 milliseconds. But with a minimal routing and switching delay, because our data has to make a lot of hops along the way to get there, the real world latency is 70 milliseconds with minimal routing and switching delay. Now, going from U.S. to Asia is even worse, and that involves latencies in the, in the range of 250 milliseconds, 
which makes delays in phone calls very noticeable. But there's, a, there's an even bigger problem for real-time applications, and that's jitter. Jitter is a temporary spike in routing and switching delay in the network. Think of it as brutally long layovers when airports are heavily congested, only in this case we're talking about congested routers and switches. The delay might only last a fraction of a second or, se or even several seconds, but it's long enough to cut your application off for the duration of the jitter spikes. Just imagine trying to talk to someone on the phone and having every other word cut out. So what causes jitter? BitTorrent, or any peer-to-peer -peer application, are generally the worst culprits. That's because they aggressively open dozens of communication channels to perform a single task to grab as much bandwidth and transmit opportunities as possible inside the network. In my testing, BitTorrent can easily average 312 milliseconds of jitter. It can add that much jitter to the network and it can add frequent jitter spikes of well over a thousand milliseconds. Each one of these spikes here are over a thousand milliseconds. It basically renders voice over IP communications and gaming unusable despite the fact that BitTorrent, the company, claims that their application is network friendly. Now BitTorrent isn't the only culprit streaming video applications like Netflix or YouTube that aggressively buffer ahead to avoid playback inter interruptions also tend to cause problems. In my measurements, this can average 44 milliseconds. These are little bumps in jitter. But occasionally it can, even, it can also go above 1,000 milliseconds. While that's not as bad as BitTorrent, it's still bad enough to cause major problems for voice over IP and gaming. That's it for today's lesson. In our next segment, we'll look at how we can solve these jitter problems.